Well, hey everybody, Joe Buddy, Chef Jared, and yeah, we're here in the, uh, the the back 40. It's such a wonderful day. It's so sunny and nice. I figured we'd, we'd start out out here. And I hope everybody had a great Super Bowl Sunday, but you know what? It's Monday morning. Yeah, time to get back at it. So here's my question for you as we start the week. Are you enjoying the ride or are you just playing out the clock? Now you're probably wondering, what the heck am I talking about? And what does that mean for you? Well, it's what I want to look at today. This is your Monday morning moment. It's rise and shine, people. So yeah, playing out the clock. Now you sports fans probably know what I mean by that, but if you're not a sports fan, here's what playing out the clock means. It refers to a contest like a football game um, that's already over in terms of the score is 35 to nothing, but there still may be some time left on the clock, two or three minutes. No doubt who's going to win. But you know what? <clears throat> you still got to play those last two or three minutes, don't you? And everybody just kind of goes through the motions because the game's over. So that's what's referred to as playing out the clock. It could all be, also be referred to as just going through the motions. And I wonder... How many of you might be playing out the clock of your life? Yeah, the outcome in your mind is a foregone conclusion, so you're just playing out the clock. Is that really how you want to live? Well, of course that's not how you want to live. None of us want to. And you know what? God doesn't want us to play out the clock of our lives either. He's got bigger plans. But do you remember uh, back in December, I did a Monday morning moment video called meaningless. And it was about the book of Ecclesiastes, which my Tuesday morning men's group had started studying. And I was just so taken aback by King Solomon, the richest, wisest, all that in the world, and how he wasn't happy with his life. And we were talking about it again on Tuesday because we're, we're almost getting finished with it. And uh, Solomon's still not happy, you know, halfway through. And um, one of the guys in the group said, you know what? He just wasn't happy with the ride, was he? And I'm going... Man, that's a great way to put it. How many of us can truly say we are happy? We are enjoying the ride of life. Well, deep down, we all want to do that, don't we? Uh, we don't want to get to the end like Solomon did and look back and go, gosh, it was all meaningless. The ride sucked. Nope. We want to look back and be able to say, man, that ride was awesome. So, okay, how are we going to do that? So I think a lot of it depends on really what your definition of a good ride is. So if you look back at King Solomon, his definition of a good ride was you know, status and, and fame and you know 700 wives and wealth and all of that. Didn't quite work out like he planned it, did it? So if you think that that's going to be the answer for your life, having a good ride, you may want to refer to Ecclesiastes and just check it out. Now, I got a couple of ideas that I want to share with you, and of course, they're wrapped around a couple of gold nuggets, but I think if you think about it and you embrace them, then you'll get the right perspective on how to really have a great ride in life. So the first is one we've talked about many times, and I think it's probably, of all the gold nuggets, it's probably the one you have to embrace the most if you really want to be able to enjoy the ride. It's John 16, 33, where Jesus says to his disciples, I have told you these things so that in me you will find peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Holy cow, well, you know, Jesus is pretty much saying very clearly, this life sucks every now and then. The ride's gonna be a little bumpy, but if you embrace Jesus, if you have Jesus in your heart, the ride's gonna be a lot smoother. So it starts right there. So if you're not real you know, excited about the concept of embracing the suck and you're wondering, is that really going to make any difference? Well, I got another gold nugget and this is what I call like the companion piece to John 16, and I'm going to read it off of my uh, YouVersion app on my phone. I highly recommend you get the app. And this is James 1, verses 2 through 4. You've heard this one also. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking for anything. So think about that for a second. If you embrace Jesus, then you'll be able to embrace the suck. And when the suck happens, 
like James says, then it's just going to make you stronger when you overcome it, and then you will eventually be lacking for nothing. Do you see how those work together? Yeah, pretty powerful. But so what's the point to all of this? Well, I think the point is simply this. You know, when our days are done, I think we all want to be able to look back and say, man, life was a great ride. Um, and I think sometimes this world, not sometimes, all the time, this world's trying to tell us how that ride should look. But I think all we got to do is look at our good buddy King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes and, and we'll understand that all the wealth, all the fame, all the status, all the material goods, none of that's ever going to matter when we evaluate what kind of ride we had in life. So here's what the point is. It begins and it ends with Jesus. It's that simple. So if you happen to be one of those folks, and you know, we've all been there at one point or another, uh, but if you're one of those that feels like you're just playing out the clock in your life, eh, I have a suggestion for you. You know, Jesus is knocking on the door to your heart. The minute you let him in, you're in for the ride of your life, and I mean in good ways. So remember that. Think about it. Go with it. Friends and neighbors, if you feel like there's somebody that might benefit from this message today, I hope you'll share it with them. I appreciate that. And until next time, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Until next week, God bless. We'll see you.